Hello everyone, and welcome to my Roblox scripting series where I teach you how to script on Roblox. In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about networking and replication. So Roblox runs on a client-server model, a model that is most effective in multiplayer games like the many on Roblox. When a player joins a new game on their device, a new client is created. That client represents that specific user. The new client then connects to a powerful Roblox server that represents the game itself. The server updates the game state and handles most of the game logic, while the client receives those updates and handles all of the rendering, effects, and input requests that you put in. Now as the server makes changes to the game, the client must also be updated to match the state of the server. This takes place in the form of replication, where the server replicates the state of the game to each client. Where networking comes in is when you can pass specific data from the client to the server, or vice versa. To do this, we use remote events and remote functions. Remote events allow one-way communication from one side to the other. For example, we can make a remote event, put in a replicated storage, and put a local script in starter player scripts that fires the remote event, passing a string, a number, and a boolean. Then on the server, we can put a server script into server script servers and catch that fire call through its event and connect the function to it with the arguments. Note that the first argument of every server event will be the player who fired that event, so the arguments passed by the client will start at the second argument. Client events will not have any special arguments added. So now we can print the arguments listed here, and as you can see, they appear in the output. Now remote functions allow two-way communication between the client and the server, and instead of having server and client events, we have server and client callbacks. These callbacks are functions that return values back to whichever side invoked the remote function. For example, I can put a remote function in replicated storage, and in my server script, I can set up a callback function like this, where I return a boolean. In my local script, I can call that remote function's invoke server method and set that to a variable. Note that remote functions do pause the script and wait for a value to be returned. Once that value is returned, the local script will continue, and I can print that value to the output. Now not every object that exists on the server will replicate to the client. You can check under what circumstances an object will replicate by looking at the creator documentation. The link is in the description. This is also why there are two types of scripts, server scripts and local scripts. Regular scripts have access to objects on the server, while local scripts only have access to replicated instances and objects originally created by the client. The local scripts run on your computer, while the server scripts run on the Roblox servers. So it is important to understand these things to organize the tasks of your game effectively. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment on how you felt on the video, and I will see you in the next tutorial.